<laughs> She's our next speaker, right? Uh, we still no? it is end of May. Yeah. End of May. Oh, okay. End, end of May. May. Right. All right. Yeah, Francisco, I'll talk to you sometime later because you know uh, we plan to go to Ecuador and Galapagos next year. So sometimes later. I, I was in the email, right? <laughs> I was in the email. Well, take us along, Victor. Yeah. <laughs> next year. Take us all along. <laughs> Thank you. Wanna go with me? Galapagos. Sure. Imagine that. Sure, of course. Okay. Oh, guys, one minute to go. I'm starting yes. broadcast now, Victor. Okay, okay, I see it. Very good. So, um, Mike, are you ready? Yes. Bella, so are if, you ready? If you, <laughs> if you are ready, then let's go. Okay. Three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to Beyond Birding here on the Asian Bird Fair online talk with Victor Yu in Taipei, Andrew Sebastian in KL, and me, uh, I'm Mike Lu in Manila. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight is our ninth episode, and our special guest is a very good friend of the Asian Bird Fair, uh, representing Alpine Tours from China. Let us welcome Miss Bella Zhang. Bella, how are you? Bella Hello, Bella. <laughs> Bella, <Hello>. ni hao. <laughs> I guess Bella is shy. <laughs> <laughs> Bella disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give her a few minutes. Yeah, just yeah, because we were just talking. Right. I guess you know, just just prepare herself a, a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a long talk, like you know, 30 to 40 minutes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. But China actually is a, is a, is a great place for birding. You know, along Sichuan area. As you know, in, 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 in some parts of Sichuan, they're um, Tibetans. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're not really Tibet, but they're um, Tibetan people there. And the bird life is, I, I hear they have a lot of pheasants, right? Pheasants, fantastic yeah. pheasants, actually. It's, it's so good. Yeah, because I've been there twice, actually. And it was a very great experience. You, you, you can, can you imagine that, you know, you, you, you watch pheasants in the snow, when, when it's snowing and pheasant, Walking with trees on, on, on the grass and snow, yeah, it, it, was, it was amazing. Wow, great experience! I love that. Mm. Hi, Bella. Are you back? Oh. <laughs> Rasha is with us. Hello, we can't see Hello. you. Hello, yes, hi, Bella. Hello. Are you? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you do your Very presentation? Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> I'm from Bella. Oh, hi. Hi, Bul Bulga. Yeah, okay, hi. good. Okay. Okay, Bella is with us now. Oh, Mike? Mike? Yes. Yeah, okay. Bella is with us now. Okay, good to see you, Ms. Bella. So are you All right. okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Mike, please. I'm Thank so you. sorry for that, guys. And I'm ready at this moment. Okay. All right. You. So let me share my screen first, right? Yep. But wait, um, Mike was Mike is going to introduce you, Mike. I I I. It's okay. You can it's start. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bella, introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, here's Bella from uh, Alpine Tours, China. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm so sorry for uh, there's a little connecting issue. And I want to firstly thanks ABF for such a brilliant opportunity. And um, 
it has been such an honor to have all of you join me, join us tonight, or the old friends, or the new friends. So good evening, good morning, and good afternoon. So today, I would like to share some stories uh, that happened in our uh, eco tours in core combat Tibetan areas. I would like to separate my presentation into three parts. Firstly, I would like to introduce our company and our team to you. And uh, secondly, I would uh, like to talk a little about, about the Tibetan area. So to make sure we're all on the same page. And thirdly, we're gonna focus on the uh, combat Tibetan area and share what we did and what we do in that area and how we participate in wildlife conservation and the local community development. Um, but before I start, I would like to say that if you get any question during the presentation, please feel free to uh, print it up and, and can, I can also answer it at the end of the presentation. And another thing is, I'm so sorry that uh, <clears throat> English is only my second language. If there's something I, didn't, uh, I can make myself clear, please do feel free to let me know. All right, first thing first, uh, who are we and uh, what does Alpine Birding do? We are a birding and a wildlife watching company that based in Chengdu, China, which is the southwestern part. Officially, we started our business in 2010, but uh, we actually started earlier than that. Um, some of you probably have met our founder, Philip He. Um, before 2009, uh, 2010, we have we had been working as local partners for many uh, Western professional Western bird and uh, wildlife companies, and uh, uh, the foundation of open birding are actually inspired by them. And we are very lucky that we are uh, at a very good time. Um, although birding and wildlife watching is still very new and at a very beginning stage in China, but uh, we. The population of birder is going is growing very fast, especially the young generation. So we're very lucky that we have a very professional group. We have um, a professional tour leader group, and we have a very good, very strong sport team. Most of our tour guides they are based in China, but we do have guides from that are based in UK and uh, South Africa. And, and there, you know, there's one thing very interesting that uh, even our support team, most of them, they are amateur birders. They all love birding. So once they get a chance, they will go out of birding with us. So they can, they understand our needs. They can, so they can always give us the biggest support. But from the view of those people who don't watch birds, we can be this, um, typical and the classic birders. We can be very stubborn and weird and crazy. All right. And uh, nowadays we run tours all over China and we also run tours outside China, including Asia, North America and South, uh, South Africa. And this is just a little information about our team. Um, before I jump to the second part, I also would like to share some of our thoughts on uh, wildlife conservation and uh, um, local community development. Because we are a birding company, we care about wildlife and we care about local community uh, as much as the NGOs and other conservation organizations do, but we can work the way they do. So we work totally different. There are millions of ways that we can um, do these projects, but uh, uh, we only get 40 minutes tonight. So I would like to share two um, important ideas with you. Um, the first one is we think for wildlife conservation, um, only if you know it, uh, you're gonna love it. Only if you love it, you're gonna protect it, protect it. It's actually very common that we found uh, in our past tours. People are always 
were very curious. They, they were always very curious about we, about our team. There's always a bunch of people, strange people carry very strange equipment and to everybody everywhere um, into this really remote place, but they don't understand what we do at the very beginning. So after years of years running tours there, uh, we actually seen a lot of uh, beautiful story happened in that area. For example, we have uh, turned some villag villagers into bird high owner. And we have seen that a lot of parents, they, uh, they bring and they take care of more of their um, children nature experience and they take their children to the nature more and join birding tours more. And the second part, I think, uh, um, for community development, local community de development, I think um, the exchange of idea is really important. In our tours, we always um, choose to use local hotel, local restaurant and local guides first. There's one, um, there's one important thing, that's how we support them. However, beside that, I think um, the exchange of ideas is really important, especially in this, in this remote areas, such as the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. You know, in Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, which is uh, mainly this area, there are, oh, there are many Tibetan people living in this area and uh, they are all believing Tibetan Buddhism, which requires them um, to treat other creatures, uh, wildlife equally. So they don't kill wildlife at all, but still wildlife conservation and the local community development is still very challenging at that, in that place. I'm going to explain more in the third part, but I want to share these two ideas with you first before we go, no, we go, to, the, we go to the third part. All right, now uh, let's jump to the second part. Here, I want to share a little bit uh, about a little information about the uh, Tibetan area. Um, firstly, we can take a look at this map. Um, geographically, geographically, we can divide China into three terraces. The eastern part, uh, the northeastern, eastern and the southeastern part is that area we call it the third terrace, which consists of hills, low mountains, and the coast. coast. And in this area, we can expect some uh, endemic forest species in southwestern China, such as the reefs pheasant, if you, anyone have heard about it, and also the, some migratory birds along the uh, east coast. It's a, it's a very important migration line between East Asia and Australia. And then we have the second terrace, which is from the middle China to the eastern edge of Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. In this area, we have the most virus hab habitat types um, like the desert and the high mountains, low mountains, plains, basins, the rainforest, and in Yunnan, in the uh, forest uh, south Yunnan. And we also have the most endemic species in this area, such as the iconic giant panda. All right, this is the second terrace. Then we have the first terrace um, is the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. It is also known as the third pole of this world, which characterized by the high elevations, cold weather, uh, very strong sunlight and thin oxygens. Um, if people haven't been to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau before, they probably think this is a place that this place is not good for wildlife. You probably cannot find any wildlife there, but actually it has uh, it is the one of the destinations that has the richest richest wildlife resources in China, and uh, another thing is it's very important to China, and it um, it has uh, it, it is the uh, source area of 
some very important rivers in China, including the Yangtze River and the Yellow River. Now we focus on um, these three parts. We can see they are marked in different color. Actually, um, a lot of people don't realize that um, we have different kinds of Tibetan people. Here, uh, they are divided they are, or recognized by different dialects. They, for example, the people living eastern, eastern Qinghai, probably they don't understand what the uh, Tibetan people say if, when, if the people live in uh, Tibet AR. So we're gonna introduce this three part uh, separately. First, the, the Andor Tibetan area. Andor people mainly live in Qinghai and some of them also live in South, Northern Sichuan. And um, uh, they are very famous for rising horses. They have very good horses. They use the horse to exchange goods from you know, Han Chinese people. And uh, they, or they lived a nomadic life in the past and traveled for uh, grass and water all year round. And this is the, some highlight species that we can see in uh, this area. Some of them are um, endemic and uh, really unique. The first one is buff-throated partridge and the second one, uh, Mongolia jay. I, I'm not going to explain more, but if you do interested in some of them, you can ask me questions after that. And then we have snow leopard, the snow mountain kin, and we have a little story behind this, uh, <laughs> behind this animal. We started running tours to the plateau over 10 years ago. And um, we, met a, we, we met a local uh, ranger. He worked at a conservation station. Uh, his name is Zhou Bao. At that time, he can, he can barely speak any, <clears throat> excuse me, he can barely speak any mandarins, um, but 10 years after, after years of working, working in that area, uh, he can speak fluent mandarin now, fluent Chinese. And uh, he is a wildlife photographer now. And he, can, he has very sharp eyes and he can even speak some English words now. And his wife, or it's also a lovely story. His wife in the past, she can only cook Tibetan food, but now he can cook very good, very yummy Sichuan style food. And oh, we got a picture here. The gentleman standing at the right side is, is him, Rou Bao. Um, this, this photo was taken about one month ago. Uh, we have sent, we have, we have done three tours to Qinghai uh, Tibetan Plateau this year. And that is, is really a good place to, for cat species and uh, those endemic species. We, we spotted one snow leopard and we all spotted a Eurasian lynx and the palace's cat in the three trips. This photo actually was uh, taken by uh, Rou Bao, the local guide. Here, are some other species. We have Tibetan rose finch, endemic, and they're very rare or can be only found around uh, from the area uh, from a elevation between 4,500 to um, 5,000. Here is the Tibetan antelope. And the second row is the blue ear pheasant, uh, crested wobbler, wild yak, Eurasian. Uh, Eurasian lynx and the uh, Plessis cat. All right, and we have, um, I can see the screen now, but we have Alashan, oh, sorry. We have Alashan Red Star here and I have, um, well, Blindford Snow Finch, yes. At the bottom, we have Black Necked Queen, which is the only queen that breed on the plateau, uh, Tibetan Snow Finch wide-eared pheasant. We also have the Provaskis pink tail. It is one of the oldest um, species in Paris family that we can find in only in this, in a very limited area, uh, only on the plateau. And we have two cups of Tibetan fox. It's a very common species. We can see it anytime we get there. 
All right, then uh, the same part as the uh, Wei Zhang part, um, mainly is the Tibetan autonomous region. This is the religious and cultural center <coughs> for most uh, Tibetan people. If you travel from Qinghai to Tibet or you travel from Sichuan to Tibet, and you can see a lot of Tibetan people do the pilgrimage trip from on the on the national road, all right. And in but the, besides seeing those beautiful monasteries, including the majestic Putala, you can also see a lot of um, breath thought after species like uh, black pheasant, Himalayan mono, female animal, Tibetan uh, Tibetan eared pheasant. Uh, Himalaya, beautiful rose finch, red goral, and uh, uh, Devian parrot, and the Tibetan blackbird, uh, just to name a few. There's a lot of species we can expect in that area. Then um, after this, we're going to focus on Kamba Tibetan area. Kamba Tibetan area, the location of it is very, very special because uh, it is located uh, between Qinghai Tibetan Plateau and the Sichuan Basin um, on the, in the core area of Henduan Mountains. Henduan Mountain um, is the main habit of some really very old and endemic species like uh, the uh, giant panda and also red panda and some parabioles, pheasants. Some of them are endemic, some, some of them are not. All right. Kamba people, um, they are if you want to recognize them, they normally they are taller and stronger, uh, and that they are very smart businessmen. They were um, very good at doing business on the T horse road between Sichuan and Tibet. We, they sell goods from they they buy goods from Chengdu area, Sichuan area, and they sell it to Tibetan area, and they. they I'll make good money. <laughs> All right. In this area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share one of our classic itinerary that we run in uh, that we run in this area, and I'm going to explain how we work with local people, local uh, local guide, and a local restaurant. I'm going to uh, explain it one spot by one spot. All right. This is the classic. Birding route, uh, Western Sichuan birding route. And only we set a length of two weeks. And the best time for this trip is from late March to late June. All right. So, firstly, we're going to go to Longchanggo area. This area, uh, the reason we do that is because the um, elevation in this area is much lower. And when we Finish our tour in this area. The highest elevation we're gonna reach is 404. Oh, sorry, 4,480, which is very high. So, firstly, let's focus on Longchanggo. Longchanggo is very famous for watching parabills. I'm. I don't know if anyone have heard about uh, um, uh, the other spot called the. Uh, I um, can't remember the name at this moment, but oh, Wawu Mountain. Sorry. Um, Wawu Mountain was very famous, but uh, it was closed. Now it's reopened, but it was closed because of a uh, hairy snow. Then a lot of uh, some birders found this, this area, which is, the, which is located on the other side of the Wawu Mountain, also very good for parabills. So many, now we mainly go this area instead of Wawu. Um, here we can expect uh, many parabell species like a golden parabell, uh, gray hooded parabell, endemic species, and brown parabell, gray parabell, three toed parabell, endemic species, and ash throated parabell. Um, besides, we can also expect some other extraordinary species, such as this one, uh, Timingus tracking pie. Very gorgeous. This is a male, very beautiful. Um, in we get very good chance in April and early May 
And he, this picture is a very typical habitat there. We can see many layers of the, fir, uh, of the first. And the lowest layer is a very dense bamboo forest, uh, which is arrow bamboo. And then we get other kinds of trees there. This is a very typical panda habitat. Actually, this is a uh, reintroduction center for uh, giant panda. This is on this, uh, they trained the Chengdu panda base, they trained the wild panda somewhere else and uh, bring it to this area and release it. So to get into this area, we need to apply special permit. And they don't actually, they don't give too many permits uh, to visitors, but we've worked with them many years then. So, which allows us to go to the core area and the high elevations. So where we can, where we can find out all our targets. Besides this um, area is also known as the Western rainy zone. Um, it has it has a lot of rains, so it has a lot of flora flora species, such as the rhododendron. Oh, sorry, the rhododendron here, and this one is the Chinese stuff tree, also a very as endemic to as this species endemic to China. Here in this place, we normally stay at a local uh, guest house. This guest house owner is uh, this guest house is owned by a local family. Um, they, 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 have, they have no, they had no idea about what birding is ten years ago. But uh, uh, it has become one of the most popular guest house guest houses for many birding companies. All right, so here we mainly we, we sometimes we also hire uh, local drivers to get into some um, area that uh, we cannot drive in ourselves but it really depends on the targets of that trip. This is about the, the Longchanggu part. The second stop of this trip is called La Ba He. La Ba He is also a gorgeous destination because it is by far the best place to find red panda in China. If we go there in spring, we normally have very high chances. We only missed it one time in 2000, uh, uh, 2019, yeah, in our spring trips. And it's also a habitat for wild giant panda, um, but uh, it's gonna be difficult because giant panda is a very shy and a solitary animal. They only travel around during breeding season to find the partners. But we did spot the wild giant panda in this area. And we also have some very interesting species in this area, like uh, Lady Amethyst's pheasant. This is a male, very colorful, gorgeous bird, and uh, uh, the chance is very stable in this area. Other, some other forest species here, uh, like uh, golden bush robin and a fibrous per, uh, peribill. In this area, it, it is also a uh, nature reserve, so but it is well organized, doesn't like other places. It is some, there's a area, uh, this area is open for all visitors. So you don't need to get permission to get in, but um, you need to buy tickets, buy uh, the shuttle bus tickets as well. So what we do is we choose to stay inside the reserve and then we also eat inside to get the uh, best opportunity. This is the, Second stop, La Ba He. Uh, after that, we're gonna drive uh, further west to Kangding. Kangding is the prefecture, prefecture capital of Gansu Autonomous Prefecture, Gansu Tibetan uh, Autonomous, Autonomous Prefecture. Um, from now on, we're gonna see some gorgeous Western uh, plateau sceneries. This is a very typical scenery there. Uh, this is a small village called the uh, Kamba village. And we're also gonna see some uh, very beautiful monasteries in this area. The main targets in this area is also uh, Lady Amos Hester's pheasant and a uh, white year pheasant and uh, ibis bill and some other species as well. In this area, we normally 
um, for classic birding tour. Uh, we normally just guide to go this regular place to savers, but if we guide photographer tours, we're gonna we normally work with some local guys. They were uh, villagers in the past, but after bird watching was introduced uh, into this area, uh, they actually learned from all the all, all the birders, and they start to they started to run their to run their own small business in this area. Um, another way we support the local community is we visit some local monasteries. Yes, because like we mentioned before that because of their religion, because of their belief, Tibetan people do not kill, especially around these monastery areas. They even gave out their own food to the wildlife. So you can, it's very easy for you to find some wildlife uh, around the monastery. In this background, you can see the wall of the monastery. So sometimes we do take our group to the monastery and we make a donation. Enjoy, then we enjoy both birds in the monastery at the same time. One more thing about the counting is, counting is a um, regular site for us to do some um, nature education tours for school kids. It's very important for them to understand and to get into the nature. So for school kids, um, we normally add more activities. <clears throat> for example, we can take them to visit local Tibetan families and then we also enjoy taking them to the local markets. This, those photos are taken from last summer. Um, we, take, uh, we took them to the uh, Litang Horse Rising Festival, which I'm going to explain later and to share with you later. We also, take them, we also took them to this local market. There are a bunch of fresh seasonal mushroom. This is a very huge one, a lot of interesting thing to say in this local market. And then they enjoy communicating and buy stuff from local people. All right, this is Kanding. And then the fourth stop is Yajiang. In Yajiang area, um, there is a very important target is the buff-throated partridge. But at the same time, we can also see some interesting bird species, small birds like it. Uh, white-brow white tit wobbler, this one, and also Yunnan Natach. All right, in this place, we also, we, what we do is we visit a monastery. Monastery is very good in Tibetan area. So we, uh, normally we make small donations to the monastery and they, all, they are all familiar with us. They all know us and we can enjoy it. These birds can be, a, they can just feed on this grass, grassland in front of the monastery. Mm. Very easy to see them. After that, we're gonna drive back forward and normally for classic birding tours, I mean, then we're gonna see some uh, extraordinary sceneries that is very different from what we, have, we can see in, before that. This is a stone forest which is called a Bamid stone forest. As a uh, on, we can find it on the uh, Tagong grassland, and this is the Tagong monastery. And in the background is the Yala snow mountain. It's one of the uh, holy mountains, most important snow mountains in Tibetan culture. Um, after Yajang, we're gonna go to Danba. In Danba, we're gonna see some different architectures. Uh, I forgot to mention. Actually, from Kanding, we're gonna uh, we normally start to say some um, Tibetan buildings, Tibetan architecture. But uh, the Tibetan buildings we're gonna see in this area, it can be very different. So this can be a very good highlight for some of our clients. So in Denba, it's more like a transit spot, but um, we also decide um, choose to stay in a local restaurant, which is located on, on the mountain the mountain hill. You know, we can see a beautiful monastery in front of it. 
Um, here we don't have a special targets, but we can we we can see some very interesting species like a uh, rose finches, crimson broad finch, and a lot of uh, small forested birds. After this one, we're gonna go to a very important um, area. <laughs> this is one of the most important birding destinations in China. It's called Balang Mountain. Why it's important? Because it is, we can consider it as the distribution center of pheasant species in China or even in this world. We can see some extraordinary pheasant species here. This one is Chinese mono, two males, very gorgeous bird, and golden pheasant, another gorgeous bird. <laughs> this is cockleless pheasant. It's really impressive that uh, you can find uh, over 10 pheasant species in such a small area. Um, but uh, we normally we don't need to search all of them. Uh, in this area, because some of them we can easily find it somewhere somewhere else. This is the chestnut throated partridge, also can be found in this area. And besides pheasants, Barla Mountain is really good for uh, rose finches, like brown rose finch, Chinese white brown rose finch, crimson brown finch, a red breasted rose finch, striped rose finch, common rose finch, and the dark breasted rose finch. This air, this species, uh, this birds normally can be found uh, at a middle to high elevations in at the mountain. Some of some of them can be definitely a little bit difficult, like the crimson brown finch and uh, brown rose finch, but the rest are relatively easy. And other interesting, some other interesting species. Uh, the Grand Isle, the Grand Isle, uh, in a very beautiful heart shape, right? This is a gorgeous bird, but um, we can, normally we find it in high elevation, but uh, there's one time, uh, there was one time that I found it at low elevation. Fire throat and the Chinese uh, ruby throat, these two, bear, uh, these two birds we can only find it in summertime. And this is just, just uh, uh, to share some birds, some highlight birds. There are a lot of things to say. We normally spend three three days in this area, but uh, sometimes you can you can even spend longer. Uh, beside birds, Bala Mountain is really famous flower watching destination, flower watching place. We have a lot of plateau, which is uh, high elevation flowers, including rhododendrons, orchids, and uh, azaleas. A lot of them, they're all bloom um, in summertime, around June, later, from late June to late August. Well, it's a very beautiful place to visit. And the third thing very important about the, the Bala Mountain area is it's also a um, giant panda habitat. We normally, we are not allowed to get into the habitat. It's also a nature reserve, uh, but we are, there is a panda base at the mountain foot. We can go there and enjoy panda. Um, and if, if you, our clients have interests, they can take a panda volunteer program all the money they spend there uh, will go directly to panda conservation. Um, the, the volunteer work is very interesting. You're gonna clean the enclosure and clean the pick up their poops. A lot of interesting thing to do in this area because it is the uh, panda habitat. We can also find some companion animals like uh, red panda. Red panda is not easy to say, but we did say several times and we some um, we normally can say Chinese squirrel, um, Himalayan marmot, and sometimes red fox. Right. Then uh, this is just a brief information about this itinerary. This is a classic itinerary for birding for bird watching, but um, we actually do have different 
um, activities in this area that a lot of uh, we can enjoy or we can add to this itinerary to make it more interesting. Um, I want to share three kinds of uh, activities we can add to this itinerary. The first one is um, the one I like the most. It's called the Li Tang Horse Racing Festival. It hold every it is held every August, early August. You can see all Tibetan people gather together from Qinghai, Tibet AR, and Sichuan, and they all join this festival. They can dress in very, very beautiful traditional uh, Tibetan costume. And you can see this people come, uh, they, in, they sh play this show for you, and they're <laughs> It's very hard speeding, all right. We went there last uh, summer and also the year before. You, there is a lot of thing to say, not just the horse racing and you can see all this costume and you can talk to the uh, local people. All right, this is just a, a little information about it. The second activity we can add to this itinerary is um, we can call it local family visiting a uh, visit. Um, it's a very interesting part that um, a lot of our clients enjoyed it. We can we normally take our clients to visit a Tibetan family, a real one, and, and we just we have a regular ones. But sometimes we just find a very beautiful one, a very they're probably a very kind Tibetan family. They invited us to their. Uh, to take a seat and then we just go in and they have enjoying a cup of, uh, of yak butter tea with them. This is me <laughs> watching the, the Tibetan lady make yak butter tea for us. And we also, there's some picture that we visit Tibetan families and then enjoy and try their food. Mm, here is, uh, here's why we see that uh, uh, the exchange of ideas is very important that we, sometimes the people are very kind, but they got no ideas of, well, um, what the outside world is like. So we bring all our clients, including Western clients, to their home and they can talk, we can translate it to them directly so they can know more information. Oh, here is the more picture about our family, uh, local family visit. You can see these pigs, they like it. Mm, the third part, um, the third kind of activity we normally add to this itinerary is um, school visit. This is the, I think uh, so far the best part Mm, we normally, in the past, we do work with school and go there regularly, not just to go there one time and, and leave. We go there very frequently. This, this school, we, we, we continue visiting them for five years. Originally, and at the very beginning, all those girls and the boys, they're very, very shy. They started to learn English from um, primary school but uh, they normally they are too shy to talk to speak out but uh, after uh, years of years there they actually we found them become very confident and that they're uh, very comfortable to talk even they cannot speak too much but they are very happy to talk and one another important thing we do during this school visit is we uh, we tell them what we do here we're going to tell them we are here for uh, searching wildlife and what, what kind of wildlife you have here because all those schools look normally they located in the um, habitat but uh, those school kids they don't know too much about the wildlife there and then so i want to share a lovely story that uh, happened in our school visit to end my uh, presentation. I hope I <laughs> haven't take too. I, I don't wish. I don't want to take too much time. So here is a very cute young boy. Uh, we met him ten years ago. He is a he is very talented and very smart. Um, very he is very good at schoolwork. 
but uh, unfortunately, his family is very poor, too poor to support his education. Then we found him and then we decided to uh, support until he graduated from university. We actually, we actually um, did, we are actually supported some other school kids, but then um, I want to share this with you is because we got one visit this uh, last uh, winter. It's him. He graduated from his university and he invited us for a hot pot dinner. Um, he decided to go back to his um, hometown and uh, these small kids are his students now. He's gonna bring his, he gonna, he's gonna to tell his story to them, share them, share with them. And I hope more stories like this is gonna well happen in this era. Uh, I think uh, that's all I wanna share with you tonight. What do we do <laughs> can be very small, but uh, I think um, it's very important to continue to do this. And um, I really want to thank you, thank all of you to join me tonight. I know we're uh, going through a very difficult time. The pandemic has brought tre tremendous troubles to us. I want to all I want to make sure all of you. Take good care, and if you get any questions, please feel free to uh, bring it up. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you very much. <coughs> it's really great. Right, gentlemen. Wow. You have a question or questions? Just, just speak. Yes, yes, Francisco, please. Yes, uh, can you hear me first? Yes, no problem. Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay, great. Hello, Bella. Uh, what yeah, is the hi. national bird? Hi. What's the national bird of China or of the Tibetan Plateau? What's the bird we should be looking for when we go there? Mm, thank you. Thank you. It's a great question. Uh, actually, we haven't decided yet. <laughs> there Maybe are your government choices. has. Yeah, but the golden pheasant is one of the choices. A lot of people wanted to choose that one, but um, um, it's really difficult to make a decision. And for Tibetan plateau, it's also difficult because there are too many uh, end endemic and unique species. I think probably you can come the, uh, with us and uh, go there to look them yourself and uh, give us a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. Mean, Thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Welcome. Yeah, Horacio, yes, go, please. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Bella, what's the oh. best time to go there with a group? Well, how last you? It's been a long time. <laughs> Thank yes. you for your question. Yeah, uh, the best time as well depends for photographers. The best time gonna be March and April. Um, during the breeding season, you can get a photos of the uh, male display, right? But if you just wanted to watch birds, uh, it can be longer. You can go there from April to late June. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more question, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, both in thinking in a group for next year, uh, how is the situation about the pandemic for tourism? Is open the country now for the next year? How, how, how is the situation? <laughs> well, Oh, thank you. That's another great question. Uh, we cannot say for sure, but I want to share with you the progress, um, the current progress. Now the, we are all getting the vaccination and uh, their situation in China has already been under control for a while. So we're actually on the uh, Lunar Day holidays. Uh, all I want to say is the traffic is horrible. So the internal travel is very good, just as before. But um, I, I believe and I hope we're gonna, uh, you know, open the door and do international tours freely next year. Okay. Okay. I hope I answered your questions. Do you, think, do you think to consider to go? It's better thinking in no next year, the the, the following year in twenty three. Hmm, we can schedule next year first. Okay. And yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Herbert. Hello, Bella. Hello, Herbert. <laughs> Happy to see you, Bella. Same here. Happy to see you again. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you for that very, very nice presentation. Excellent uh, presentation. The Excellent. pressure is all mine. It's all mine. Yeah. <laughs> so question one. Mm -hmm. uh, are there women guides, women badders in China? Mm. Do you consider me as one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe you're a tour, maybe you're a tour operator, or you are the only one in China. Thank you, Herbert. That's a very good question. Um, generally speaking, we have more men guide. Uh, I think this is the same in this you know, other countries, but we do have some very talented and brilliant uh, women bird guides. But we do need more. Yeah. They kind of uh, an organization for them or club association, something like that. Yeah, 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 of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll definitely get in touch with you over that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I'm sure. happy you come, you, you come to South Africa, you don't come to Uganda yet. I think we, we discussed that at some point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I'll talk, we, we'll talk it with you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. otherwise, thank you very much. I love you. I love, I love to come to China. And I think somebody talked about uh, the Asian bird fair there. I'll be happy to be in that one. <laughs> yeah, lovely welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you too. Just keep your fingers crossed, Herbert. Yes. <laughs> All right, more questions? Just raise your hand. Yeah, and, and, and Bella, you, you talk about uh, birds, pheasants, you the, 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 the horse race. Could you tell us, you know, uh, exactly what's the best season for general birding? What's the best season for the pheasants or what's the best season for the horse race? Mm. Um, thank you so much, Victor. This is, yeah, I should have make that clear. Mm. For birding, uh, very serious birders, um, you can consider like uh, April to June, but for the Litang Horse Racing Festival, and uh, it is held every August. They normally start at August 1st. Okay, that is not the best season for birding, but uh, still it is very good enough for amateur birders. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And what about sure. pheasants? Because we mentioned there are so many pheasants there. What's the best season for pheasants? Um, for photographers, late March to, to April. And uh, if you want to just do bird watching, uh, April to late June. Is it very cold in the freeze there in the in, in Tibetan area? Oh, thank you. I should. Yeah, I should mention that too. Uh, that the reason we start, uh, we set this itinerary in that way as we want to, you know, go to the low elevation first, which the where the weather is uh, not that cold, is warmer, and then as we go higher and higher, the <laughs> the weather can be very cold. And our regular tour to Balong Mountain, the last the last spot. Um, sometimes in June and uh, July, occasionally it can snow. So um, the temperature can drop to zero or um, normally five degrees Celsius in the morning and it can be windy sometimes, so super cold. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, Lisa, yeah, I saw your hand. Uh, just to speak, Lisa. Lisa, are you ready to ask your question? All right, you may ask later, then let's go to Herbert. Herbert? Yes, Francisco, uh, you. yes, a question, yeah. Um, are there Chinese bird festivals or bird exhibitions that happen? Because China is a huge country and are there any of these happening somewhere? Like one wants to go, maybe attend one? Um, sorry, sorry, I didn't get that question. Are there any 
exhibitions, bad exhibitions, like festivals or per exhibitions. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Festivals, um, per fairs, something like mm -hmm, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have a, a lot of them, but the, uh, like uh, now we have the Chinese bird uh, bird watching association. They organize um, bird fair, uh, not bird fair, but bird bird race monthly. Um, I don't think we have a very big bird fair or bird exhibition like Asia Bird Fair, but we did have Asia Bird Fair in Hubei in 2017. 17, Sorry? 17. Yeah, yes. yeah, right, right, right. Thank you so much, Herbert. <laughs> but actually, you know, in, in, in May, you know, uh, there are, there are um, bird fairs or bird exhibitions or bird something about birds or or, or, or per week per week mm -hmm. almost everywhere in, in china mm -hmm. it's is really yeah. uh they, they they take it you know seriously actually mm -hmm. have thank question. you question yeah wait herbert yeah yes let's, um, let's go to francesco first and then did you uh, next okay francesco, okay thank you please. just very quick at the beginning of your presentation bella you mentioned about food that the yeah. Tibetan people learn to make Chinese food, and that's mm -hmm. good. What is a Tibetan dish and what is a Chinese food? Because I'm about to have breakfast soon. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm going to uh, about to have dinner here. So that's a great question. Thank you. Um, you know, there it can be very different. It really depends because even the Tibetan area is such a huge area. If you um, have, if you notice the the map in with, with different color and uh for the romantic era their food is very simple just they drink yak party yak jerky and they have this uh highland barley powder they make a, a little roll of it and they call it zamba and they bring it in uh they put it into a small bag and bring it with them to herd yaks and sheep. That is going to be very simple, and then normally uh, we can try it, but we are not. Mm, we cannot eat it for a long time. Like we cannot. Yeah, you know that's can be very difficult for us. But for Chinese food, wow, well, that's another big question because we have a lot of t different types of cuisines. So what I can say is, no matter what is your food preferences or your uh, food dialects, yeah, you can find your own food, the food that you like in China. There's no problem. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Herbert, yes, please. Yes. Uh, do the local guides um, in all these areas speak English or do you have to have a translator? Mm, good, Herbert. Uh, we have now we have Chinese speaking bird guide, we have English speaking bird guide, and we have Japanese speaking bird guide. And I think, and really, birding, bird watching is it's go it's going virus in China. You know, we have more and more young generation join this activity, and I think we're going to have bird guides speak more different languages. And we do have, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, well, Herbert, my experience in traveling in China, even mm -hmm. though, you know, I speak Mandarin, but because uh, there are so many dialects in, in, in different areas, different provinces in China. So um, if, if, if you don't, you know, if you don't speak local dialect, then people think you're outsider. They treat you differently. <laughs> That's so, true. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, you definitely need local <laughs> guys. Or my suggestion, Go to Alpine Birding, you know, they were oh, well, That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, there would be no black Chinese work looking like me. So I'll have to get yeah. a local guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, are there more questions? Okay, one, right, one last yeah, one. Yeah, we, one last one. Yeah, we, 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 okay, we're, okay. Yes, over. Yes, uh, it's about food. Uh, if I if I go to China in those areas, I love eating maybe chicken or fish. Um, maybe any issues about that with food? No, there should be no problem about food. We have everything you need and everything you want. Just come with us. Maybe next year. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. I'll come and harass you too. <laughs> yeah, Horacio, welcome. You too. Horacio, go ahead. You have a question. Horacio, no, I saw you raise your no hands. Much. All right. No okay. So, uh, yeah, before we move on, could we take a, a group photo first? Okay, let's take a group photo first, okay, before we move on. So, guys, please okay. turn your camera. Okay. Mr. Absolute Wild. <laughs> the boss. <Martin. laughs> Martin. Okay, good. Sweet Pen. Hello, Sweet Pen. Raksa. Hello. Nahar. We don't see you, Raksa. Or uh, Fong Hong Hu. Thank you. Nahar. Yeah, him. Hi. Thank you so much. Johnny, you, you should share you? on your camera. Okay, Roxa, okay. Fong Hong Hu. Yes, here I am. Uh, Chong SC. Hello, SC Chong. Wow, you know, the, the, the screen is almost full. Okay, full. one more people to go. <laughs> Fong Hong Hu, uh, are you still with us? All right, guys, please look at the camera. Don't move and smile, okay? One, two, three. Thank you very much. Let's move on. <laughs> hey, Johnny, are you yes. driving? <laughs> right? Probably, yeah. <laughs> no question? Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I Actually, I don't have a question, but I really enjoy your presentation, Bella. I mean, Thank I you. feel like... I, I am in China, like in Sichuan. I could imagine about all the bird species that you shown in the screen. It's just super. Thank you so, so much, I, buddy. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to to witness those birds next time. <laughs> sure, sure. Warmly welcome. Come and join us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, thanks. Yeah. Hopefully Thank you. one time. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. It Thank was. you very much. The boss Philip is on. Philip, yeah. Asian bird fair is next. Yeah. Yeah, Philip. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you say something, Philip? Ni hao. Oh, your mic. Your, your, your sound. Please turn your mic. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Philip Hurd from Elpine Birding. When are we having the Asian Bird Fair there? <laughs> Philip. Philip pretends yes. he, he doesn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. When are we having the Asian bird fair in your place? Oh, one more welcome. Yeah, sometimes I do a place uh, huh? in China. Normally Everyone for the birding go. companies in the world, when they want to start the first birding tour in China, Sichuan is always the first choice. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we have lots of endemic birds here. So we are looking forward to have ABF bird fair here in China and I welcome all of you to join, to come here in Sichuan. Yeah, thank you. Great. Okay, everybody <laughs> pack your bags. But, but, but we everybody mean your bags. ABF in Sichuan, China. 2023. <laughs> That's an amazing idea. We, we can start packing from now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, if there's no more question. Let's say thank you to Bella again for, his, for her great presentation. Thank you, Bella. And thank you thank so you. much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining thank us. Thank you, Bella. It's a great pleasure, you great well, honor. Buddy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bella. This week. So good. So uh, before we go, so uh, Mike, where are we going next week? Okay, before uh, we announce what next week is, thank, thank you for joining us tonight. We, ha we have a full house. I think this is the most number we had for a presentation, more than 30 people Ever. tonight. <laughs> because I came. Seven, actually. So uh, 
uh, hope you guys join us again next week for our 10th episode of Beyond Birding. Our guest speaker for next week is here with us tonight, uh, Ms. Hiroko Okamoto of the Wild Bird Society of Japan. Hi, Hi Hiroko! <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, this is Hiroko Kamoto and I'm from Wild Wild Society of Japan. So, uh, so we look I'm, forward, yeah? Yeah, uh, looking forward to see you next week. Yeah. Hi, hi. Hiroko. Okay. So we look forward to seeing everyone joining us with, with <coughs> listen to Hiroko next week. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very happy much everyone. Looking, ladies Thank you. Happy Labor's Day. And thank you very much for supporting. Thank we'll you. See you next week. Yeah. Good night, Good everyone. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, 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 b